There are 32 chapters in Cutnell and Johnson, and uh, this is the 32nd chapter. We are going to talk about things that really matter. Uh, cosmology, the fate of the universe, the beginning of the universe, and how the different forces, gravitational, electroweak, etc., froze out as the universe has cooled over time and, is, and has expanded. Um, we'll talk about nuclear reactions, both man-made and in, in stars. So that's the subject, shouldn't take us too long. So first section on nuclear fission. So in the last chapter, we talked about radioactive decay, where we have a parent nucleus that disintegrates spontaneously. It's just sitting there in its own happy way, and then all of a sudden, poof, it busts apart and spontaneously into some daughter nucleus. Now we're going to talk about forcing a nuclear reaction, uh, an induced nuclear reaction for which you've got something you're going to bang into that nucleus to try and get a nuclear reaction out of it. This could be a particle or a photon, another nucleus, and, uh, and the idea is to get a change in the target nucleus. Why should we bother? Well, you get a lot of energy out of nuclear reactions, as we will discuss. So first, nuclear fission. The idea with fission, first of all, this is a binding energy per nucleon. And we've seen this before, and we've actually calculated binding energies per nucleon, which can be around 7 or 8 MeV, million electron volts, uh, per nucleus, or per nucleon in a nucleus. And this is the nucleon number. So this is the number of um, uh, protons plus the number of neutrons inside of a nucleus. Right about here, uh, where there's a peak here, is iron. Iron's close to the peak, not right at the peak. But we see that we can get some energy out of a reaction if we break a very, very heavy element, like uranium, into a lighter, uh, one or more lighter elements. So you're breaking a really heavy nucleus into two pieces, and we're moving up in the binding energy per nucleon, which means we're releasing energy in, in, that, uh, in that reaction. So a fission reaction, you're taking a large nucleus and splitting it into smaller nuclei to generate energy. Talk about fusion reactions uh, in the next section. So for example, we have uh, uranium-235, big old nucleus with uh, 92 protons and 235 nucleons, protons plus neutrons. That will, if, if hit with a slowly moving neutron, sometimes called a thermal neutron, Just a neutron that's bouncing around due to its own random motion um, because it's at a finite temperature. If you hit this nucleus with a neutron, then you have to be moving very fast. You can split it into uh, two daughter nuclei. And uh, first goes through a compound stage, but the bottom line is you get two nuclei. Um, barium, krypton, and three so-called neutrons, well, three just plain old neutrons, then each fission event produces about 200 MeV. So that's the energy produced. We talked about moving to a higher spot on that binding energy per nucleon. This is the energy that's released. Now, just to give you an idea about these the, the strength and the magnitude of these uh, nuclear reactions compared with chemical reactions. Um, for example, the combustion of, of gasoline, that's what we do in our cars, our motorcycles, etc. You burn gasoline 
and uh, compare the amount of energy you get per molecule of gasoline with the energy you get per uh, atom of uranium in this reaction. And the answer is about 10 to the 8 more energy per molecule in this nuclear reaction than you, do, than you ever do with gasoline. 10 to the 8 is a big number. Um, 10 to the 6 is a million, so that's 100 million times as much energy for each molecule that you're reacting than you can get with combustion of gasoline. So the potential here is huge for using nuclear reactions to solve our, our world's energy problems. And uh, that's why there's so much interest in the scientific and engineering com community in trying to harness this amazing source of energy. Um, this is the amount of energy per nucleon. So this is not a binding energy, but uh, like we talked about in the last chapter, but the amount of energy released by this uh, nuclear reaction per nucleon, roughly 240, 235 here, uh, is 0.9 MeV. It's a lot of energy, about 1 MeV. So uh, this uh, conceptual example is to ask the question, why is it possible for a thermal neutron, a slowly moving neutron, to penetrate a nucleus, whereas a proton or an alpha particle would need a much larger amount of energy? Um, the question is whether you can penetrate this nucleus with a neutron, a proton, or an alpha particle. Well, take a proton. It's positively charged, and you head that toward that nucleus, what's going to happen? The nucleus is also positively charged. And so there's a repulsion of that proton from this positively charged nucleus. It doesn't want to go near that hugely positively charged nucleus. So you have to give this proton a whole lot more energy than you would have for a neutron. Same thing for a uh, helium nucleus, which is two protons and two neutrons, an alpha particle, two protons and two neutrons makes a a helium nucleus, which is an alpha particle. You send that toward this nucleus, the same problem as before. This alpha particle is positively charged and uh, doesn't want to penetrate this um, uh, uranium nucleus.